Hey, hey, everybody, this is your girl, Carla Renata, a.k.a. The Curvy Film Critic, and I have a guest with me today. I'm at the Sundance Film Festival in Park City, Utah, and I ran into my girl, Carlise Burke. Can and you we, believe it? I know, right? And we saw some movies, so we're going to talk about the movies we saw, and then she's just going to hang out with me while I talk about yeah. what I saw here, and, you know, we'll get some opinions about that and keep it moving. And all be right? nosy. I'm being nosy. She, she is being nosy, but it's all good. <laughs> And um, if this is your first time joining me, you can find me right here at Black Hollywood Live. Click below to the subscribe button so that you can get alerts of when I'm going live or when I'm bringing you a tape situation like today. I'll be able to tweet live with you um, once the chat goes up because I'll be in a movie. But, you know, we'll deal with that situation later. She's but amazing. <laughs> she, she's in movies, but when she said I'm going to be no, in a movie. I ain't in no movie. I'm on TV. She, well, she, well, and TV, but she's going to go to a movie. I'm going to go to a She'll movie. Be going to, she's been going to screenings. Like like all, yeah. like I, she's probably seen every movie. Probably no, I've seen, a, I've seen a good portion of them. But so, I, what I want to talk about first is Carlys and I both saw this film called Bad Hair, yes. and it's written and directed by Justin Simeon, who is. Uh, the creator of Dear White People. Now, yes. you guys know the film Dear White People. Mm -hmm. You know um, the TV series that he has on called Dear White People. Yes. And, you know, I, I just... I just have go. To, okay, so let me get my notes because I, I got some things to oh, say. Oh, good. I got good. some things to say about Because I just freshly came from seeing it, so I am i haven't gotten my notes together yet, <laughs> and I'm still trying to get it together in my head. So. so I have some things to say about bad hair. So first of all, it's a psychological thriller yes. dealing with how the culture our culture the african-american culture mm -hmm. deals with hair yes. and trust and believe it's a psychological thriller yes, it is. let me just say that again a psychological thriller let's say it together a, a psychological, psychological thriller. thriller so what's gonna happen is anybody that has a weave got some locks got some braids you wearing a wig it's gonna give you nightmares because it gave me nightmares yeah. like straight up yes. straight up straight up yeah so it stars El L not El Lorraine. Yeah, it stars El Lorraine, Vanessa Williams, Blair Underwood, Michelle Hurd, um, Kelly Rowland, Kelly Rowland, Laverne Cox, Lena Way. It's, yes. it's just a plethora of people, yes. and it takes place in the '80s, so it's a little bit of a throwback too, mm -hmm. you know, to that MTV VJ kind of situation. Yes, yes. But honey, the first thing I want to say about it is that um, it really deals with those societal norms of of what we think about our hair yes. and it and, and and how we have a tendency to judge and accept someone based on what kind of hairstyle they True. have yes. don't you think yeah, exactly that's how it starts out yes and definitely. then what happens is once this girl gets a weave yes her whole personality changes because mm -hmm. you know when she had her her natural hair oh and let me just say in the beginning of the film she has a situation where her hair is burned. You know how if any if you are a black mm. girl at some point in your life you have had your you hair burned had and, a you, and you have had the creamy crack burn the hell out of your yes. head, possibly leaving a scar or some scabs yes. or worse. But having that situation where she's had natural hair and had her hair um, attempted to have her hair permed once, mm -hmm. she had the scar in the back of her head and she was always trying to like you know pull on it and do mm -hmm. stuff with it. But then she gets that weave mm. and homegirl, <laughs> for was, lack of a better way to say it, it was almost like she saw the light. <laughs> right, right. But well, the weave was about as painful as that burn from from the perm. Yeah, like I the, mean, there's a ooh. scene. The scene there's a scene in the movie where they do a close, like an extreme close up on her scalp. scalp. When they're taking the needle into yes. the hair, and you see the blood. Child, it's a lot of things. It's but a lot. It's, it's one. Lot. It was the premiere film here at Sundance. Yes. One of the films that premiered um, the first night. It's gotten lots of controversy, and mm -hmm. it's, it's like Hillary Clinton. It's one that you either hate it or you love it. The, the, yes, it's, and it's a lot to unpack in it's, this film. It's a lot to it's unpack. It's one that you might want to see more than once, mm -hmm. but there's a lot going on. And, and I just want to say, I met Justin after, uh, oh, at the, the, screening. after the screening. Lovely young man. <laughs> lovely, lovely, lovely. Yeah. Amazing work. Interesting. I, I applaud him for his courage and his thoughts. And he even said at the beginning of the screening, I got a lot of things. On. No, 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 let me get it right. He goes, um, Oh, forget it. I forgot the quote. So let's just forget. If, if I remember it, I'll say it again. But he's like, I do think about a lot of things. Or I've got a lot on my mind. I think that was it. It's, and yeah. there it but, is. But I do want to say that he did say during the Q&A after the film that the, 
the, one of the characters is named after his mother. I believe his mother's name is Carol. I oh, believe it's okay. So one of the characters is named after that. And, okay. and I find it very interesting. Somebody actually brought this up to me. I find it very interesting that this is a film about women and an issue that plagues women written by a man. But this is also a man who has grown up with his mother. Yes. So he's seen his mother, his grandmother, his cousins, yes. his sisters, whoever is a female in his family go through this and decided to just make a psychological, psychological thriller, thriller about it, which was absolutely fascinating. And I'm not going to lie, when I first saw it, I was like, I had to, th- I had to take it and process it. Yeah, for a I actually physically, my body reacted during the film. I had to process it because yeah. I was like, I don't know how you I did. feel about this. Was this really bad? I don't, I'm not sure how I'm feeling about this right now. Well, so I took some time sorry, and walked away. Yeah, I took, no, 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 I, I took some time, walked away from it, yeah. and was like, and wrote what I wrote, and he retweeted it cause after he read the oh, review. Oh, so. okay, I have to look at that. I have to go yes. find that. My bad hair review. Yes, I, I and I'm glad hair I didn't. Hair toss, check my nails. Yes. Baby, how you okay. doing? <laughs> How you doing? I'm glad I didn't read it ahead of time. I purposely, I don't like to read things before I go see it because I want to form my own opinion because I'm very easily influenced, FYI. And so I didn't want to be, especially by this diva right here. So I was just like, no, I just want to see it on my own. I was going to go to the premiere, couldn't get in. That's a whole nother story. But I did go this afternoon. Um, and we have to uh, also introduce the, the African or the black folklore. That yes. is another Ooh, okay. layer that. That's a whole of this. Layer of a it. whole nother layer of this film. Yeah, um, I mean, it, it talks about. Uh, I, I can't remember the character's name, but her father had a book that um, talked about the whole. Like you said, well, the, it was his uh, her uncle. Was it Blair Under? That's right. That's right. Uncle, uncle. Uh-huh. Uncle. Mm-hmm. He had this whole book that had all the history of black people, mm-hmm. including their hair and all of this stuff yes. in it. And he he loved to pass it down from generation to generation. Mm-hmm. So there was that. But yeah, and she didn't want anything to do with it at first mm-hmm. until she, she got, got that weave. <laughs> Right, and she exactly. Got that and then it was off and popping. Yeah, she was like, she asked her her, her, her cousin, um, "Now where's that book? You still have that book?" And at one point, she gave it back to her cousin, but she called back on the phone and said, "Okay, read me that next story over the phone." And her cousin was like, "Really? I'm sleeping." She goes, "Read me the story." It was a lot so, going on. It but was a lot. You guys, I don't have any distribution information about Bad Hair yet because they're shopping it around. Yeah. But when I do have a release date on Justin Simeon's Bad Hair. I will let you know about it. So Carlise is gonna hang out here with me I am. while just I gonna go, be nosy. while I go through the re- <laughs> while I go through the rest of these films. I'm gonna drink my coffee, no she endorsements. I'm gonna turn the um, cup around. Man. Starbucks. Wait, oh wait, wait, wait. Turn around. Yeah, wait, go. where's my label? Where we go? Okay, Starbucks. Um, you need to endorse your girl. Okay, so anyway, <laughs> that, I agree. <laughs> you need to endorse your girl because I'm drinking a, a chai tea latte at Sundance. Learn it. Okay. Anyway. So let me talk about this film that came out earlier in the week called The Gentleman. So when I saw this film, it's like an action, um, whodunit, um, kind of comedy kind of thing, and it's a mostly male cast. But baby, when I first saw this, I was like, what the hell is this? Mm. I said, oh Lord, Matthew McConaughey then did another movie where I'm looking at him with my eyes crossed. But <laughs> like with bad hair, I took some time to process and I realized it was actually a very good film. It's very funny. There's lots of laugh out loud moments. Um, and it's kind of like a Sherlock holmes type of comedy. Oh, we have like stars it. in it like Math, um, I already mentioned Matthew McConaughey, McConaughey, but Michelle Dockery from Downton Abbey's in it, oh. Michael Caine's in it. Um, Hugh Grant is playing like this smarmy kind of tabloid journalist oh. who's trying to like, you know, um, blackmail people. He didn't blackmail the wrong people and, uh-uh. and, and ended up with his own demise. It's, 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 it's very funny. But it's in theaters right now. Um, I believe it's produced by STX Films. If I'm wrong in that, I'm sure y'all will let me know. Um, and it was written, produced, and directed by Guy Ritchie. So it looks like Guy Ritchie has another oh, hit on his hands. Nice. All right, and now back to Sundance. So, <laughs> <laughs> so the next film that I saw at Sundance was this film called Zola. Mm. And this is the thing. I'm so mad I missed it. Drama. But go ahead. Look, now I want to know. So good, good, Zola good. is happy. written by Janissa Bravo. She, I met her at a panel where she was talking about being an influencer and how um, difficult it was for her as a woman of color with original content, how hard that was for her to be able to get sponsored or to be able to have her stuff produced. Well, Janissa, you ain't got to worry about that now, girl, because you got Zola. And when Gina I took Davis. Gina Davis, I knew it was right. Okay, so Gina Davis. Gina Davis um, 
was heading up that panel. And Gina Davis has a film festival called the Bentonville Film Festival, which is oftentimes geared toward female film makers. So having said that, Janissa has this film here in Sundance called Zola. Okay, so I had to, <laughs> so I had to do a jump cut because my mama called me. <laughs> Mamas. <laughs> you know, my mama. But anyway, so Janissa... Has this, has this uh, film that's based on 144 tweets from 2015 by Azia King. And it's about this crazy ass night that she had. She she worked as a waitress and a stripper, um, mm. this girl did. And she met this young lady named Stephanie in, in a restaurant where she worked. And, and, the, and they exchanged numbers. And the very next day, Stephanie invited her to go on a road trip to Florida where they could make some more money at this club that has better clientele. Oh, okay. When I tell you shenanigans ensue, oh shenanigans God. ensue, shenanigans ensue. That was the craziest, zaniest, wackiest film I'd ever seen wow. in my Like, listen, this is what the first line of the film is. The very first line of the film is, you want to hear a story about why me and this bitch here fell out? It's kind of a, it's kind of long, but full of suspense. That's all you need to know about Zola. That shit is hilarious. It makes Hustlers look like a Disney movie. Whoa! It makes uh, Hustlers look like a Disney God. movie, and it's kind of like a cross between like Hustle and Flow and Hustlers. Oh my God! But the two ladies that are starring in it, Riley Keough and Taylor Page, are killing it. Wow! And Coleman Domingo is in it, and Nicholas, that's I want. Yeah. yeah, Coleman Domingo's in it, and Nicholas Braun is in it, and they are crushing it. And I'm pretty sure. Sure, the Zola is gonna get a distribution deal Good. because so it, I'll get to see it. It went. It was the only thing here at Sundance that went viral after it after it um, premiered. So wow, there's that. All right, and then the next thing I saw, I talked about Zola. I talked about bad hair. The next thing I saw was this film called Never, Rarely, Sometimes, Always. So mm. um, when you go to have a abortion procedure, mm -hmm. when you're in the room and they are asking you about your sexual history, mm -hmm. they ask you to answer with one of these words, never, rarely, sometimes, always. Okay. Hence the title of the film. Got it. This film is directed by Eliza Hitman, and before I go on to talk about um, never, rarely, sometimes, always, I made it my mission this particular time to either do films that were written by people of color, mm. written, produced, and starring women, because I was kind of, um, not was kind of, but I'm still kind of salty about the 11 filmmakers that had films last year that, that were female who mm -hmm. completely got ignored with the exception of Greta Gerwig. I'm feeling some kind of way about that. Mm -hmm. So um, mm -hmm. the only power that I have to do something about that is to put their work on the spotlight because I am a female film critic of color. So there yes. you have that. Go ahead, girl. Um, Go ahead. But this film stars Sydney Flanagan and Taylor T Talia Ryder and Artalia Ryder and it, this um, this teen ends up getting pregnant and they work in her and her cousin work in a grocery store where they're being abused by the grocery store owner oh. who I believe is the person that probably got her pregnant, pregnant right. and so she lives in the state of Pennsylvania where you cannot get a legal abortion her and her cousin get on a bus and they go to New York wait is that true now this is in the movie this is the premise I know of the but, film. It, uh, but yes that's, that's true now I did not even know yeah that. so okay. for those of you who don't know like my girlfriend Carlise here um, there was a law that was passed in 2019 which um, 2019. which simultaneously was a domino effect in a lot of states making getting an abortion illegal wow. completely almost completely reversing Roe versus Wade. Mm -hmm. So there's I, that. I heard about it, but <laughs> didn't know Pennsylvania was one of those Yeah, Pennsylvania is one of those states. Okay. So she goes to, to New York to get it done. They get on a bus. They go to Port Authority. Mm -hmm. And again, shenanigans ensue, but not in a good way. Right. Um, what was supposed to be a one-day trip turns into a four-day trip. Ooh. And Eliza has a tendency to... Well, not Tennessee. Eliza's style, Eliza's filmmaking style, is one where she shoots an extreme close-up mm. with very little dialogue. So with this particular subject matter in this film, it's enough to make you uncomfortable. Mm. You're uncomfortable watching it. You're uncomfortable for these girls. It is and it's, I'm sure it's intended to it's, be. It's very intense, and, it's, and she does that intentional. This is an excellent film. But I know right now, because of the subject matter, People are going to poo-poo it. They're mm. going to have something to say. They're either going to not want to deal with it based on what their stance is. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you're pro-life. I don't care if you're pro-choice. This is a film that everybody has to see, regardless of what it is. Wow. Regardless of where your stance is, you have to see Never, Rarely, Sometimes, Always by Eliza Hitman. 
The next one I saw was this morning, and I was so excited to see it because it was written and directed by Julie Taymor. Now, mm. a little bit of history about Lion Julie. King. Yes. Yes. Me and Ju- well, I, I was directed by Julie Taymor and The Lion King. I did The Lion King in L.A. for three years, as, as y'all know, because I talk about it all the time. The I was. I was Shinzi, and I talk about it all the time. But um, I cannot be at Sundance and Julie Taymor have a film here about Gloria Steinem and not go like Duh. who does that I have I had to do it so I I go and I watch the film and it's taking us on a bus trip through four different phases of Gloria Steinem's life as a teeny tiny girl mm-hmm. as like a preteen as a young woman and as a fully formed adult wow. and it was fucking awesome it was so <laughs> awesome it was so awesome it was it was everything I thought it was going to be and more. Mm-hmm. It, it was, it's very emo- if, if, if you're a woman that has a feminist bone in your body, it's very emotional. I cried several times. Wow. I cheered several times. Um, it's just Julianne Moore is starring in it. And uh, um, Academy Award winners Julianne Moore and Alicia Vikander are the stars of, of the adult version. And there's two young women that play the, the younger versions. But they have, Alicia and Julianne have... Uh, Gloria Steinem's voice and her um, her mannerisms down to a science, and you know you in for a ride when the opening shot is this bus pulling into this town, and Julianne Moore as Gloria Steinem dressed in all black from head to toe gets off this bus, and you see her in like that belt buckle, those black jeans, that black shirt, and she's just standing there, and the Gloria's comes across the stage. I'm like, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So. I don't know. I'm sure they're looking for a distribution deal, too. But it's called The Glorias. It's written and directed by Julie Taymor. It is an ode to feminism. Mm-hmm. It is inspiring. It is... It's, it's glor- the Glorias is Glorias. I mean, I, I know that sounds really cheesy, but yeah, it, it they, really they, No, it's a buzz. I've been hearing about it all over town. It really there does. There is a buzz. But can I just ask you one yes, question? Yes, of course. Because you mentioned that they uh, are looking for distrib- distribution. Now, the movie you mentioned before that, do they already have distribution? Uh, always, never... Uh, Never, rarely, sometimes, always. You, um, most of the films that play at Sundance mm-hmm. do not have distribution. But this year, I heard and this year quite a few of them do because okay. Netflix has a lot of content. Here. Yes, okay. Netflix and A twenty four have a lot of content That's what here. I heard. Okay. So those two entities do have um, their films that they're showcasing here. But most of the time, in the past when I've been here, most of the films do not have distribution, right. and they're looking to get their their films um, into a theater. So that that one did not the not yet not yet. Okay. But I'm. Um, I'm sure we'll like I can't imagine that it won't right 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 um, okay but one of the it was there was a Q&A afterwards and one of the things that that really struck me one, so wonderful to my core was when um, Julie Taymor came out to introduce the film and she said yeah this is a film about feminism but feminism is humanism and I think that's the best way to end what I have to say about the Glorias. It was a wonderful film. So I love documentaries. You guys know I talk about documentaries here all the time. Um, I saw a documentary um, about Hillary Clinton. You saw it? I did. Did you see Miss Hillary? I did see Miss Hillary. Miss Hillary Rodham Clinton. (gasps) It's a four-part documentary series that's going to air on Hulu on March 6th. Wait a minute. So you saw all four parts at the... Well, they showed all four parts. I had to skip out after the second part. So I didn't see the third and fourth part. Okay. But I saw the first and second part. But I saw enough. And it's pretty much... Um, if you and I talked to somebody later that had seen the third and fourth part. Okay. If you have been watching her on the news over the period of time that she has become um, a political powerhouse, and you mm-hmm. pretty much know everything that you need to know. Mm-hmm. What I didn't know about Hillary Clinton was the, and I'm not surprised by it, but the the sexism that people mm-hmm. treated her with. Like when she was in Alabama, they were telling her that she needed to not take her maiden name. Um, and put it in the middle. Nobody oh. does that. You take your husband's name. Oh, they would. Boy. They he. Uh, Bill Clinton put her in charge of a a, a a program, and they were like, "Yeah, you need to not do that." Like mm. they were. Try, they were constantly telling her what to do, and mm-hmm. she is a rebel. She is not <laughs> one to let anybody tell her what to do at any given time, Good. anywhere. Yeah. So I learned that about her, I, and I learned that, you know. Everybody had their assumptions about the Clintons when the whole Monica Lewinsky thing mm-hmm. broke. But at the end of the day, they're still married. And they're That's still right. married because at the end of the day, they loved each other. That's right. That's it's right. a love story. They and they're love, a team. And they're a team. Mm-hmm. I learned, and it's got to be a strong team to stand up against all, ooh, just like you know, Michelle and Barack and any, any other powerhouse couple, a political, but the president. 
They've I mean, been through come a, on. They've been through a lot. So they come for they you, right? They went through Whitewater. They went through him being impeached. They went mm-hmm. through the Monica Lewinsky scandal. Yes. They went through her running for president. Yes. They went through him being president twice. Mm-hmm. They went through her being secretary of state. So it encompasses all of those aspects of her life. But they talk about her as a young Hillary Clinton yes. before she met Bill Clinton, mm-hmm. what her life was like then. They talk about her relationship to her mother and her father. Okay. Um, her parents are primarily responsible for the strong, resilient core that she has. Mm -hmm. So I enjoyed it. It was wonderful to see her. It was wonderful. You know, hashtag I'm still with her. I'm just saying. (laughs) Hashtag I'm still with her. So Hulu, March 6th, the Hillary documentary. The next documentary I saw was called Siempre Luis. Um, Always Luis. Always Luis. (laughs) Um, It is directed by John James, and it is about Lin-Manuel Miranda's dad, Luis Miranda. Now, we all know Lin-Manuel Miranda from Hamilton, Yes. and from In the Heights and yes. for winning Tonys for those Tony for those Broadway musicals. But what we didn't know, and I surely didn't know, is that his father is a political powerhouse. Ah, his father worked for okay. Ed Koch. He, he, right. His father w- helped Ed Koch diversify his campaign by bringing Latinos into the campaign. Um, he was very politically <sighs> active. And actually, he's responsible for Lynn going to the White House to do Hamilton oh, at right. the White House for before President it, Obama, for President yes. Michelle Obama, and I, I remember seeing an interview where. Um, do you know you just said President Michelle Obama? I did. <laughs> I'm speaking I, that I'm into existence. Sure. No, but that's what I'm saying. Speak it, but I'm I don't really want to. That's President, a whole nother President and first President Obama and First Lady Michelle Obama. I just wanted to say, <laughs> it. but because I feel you. Okay, all right. But so what had happened was, um, it, it 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 just was. It was a wonderful story, and it was a wonderful story about a man who is very entrenched in the New York political scene. He helped many women get elected um, in the state of New York, and and he's from Puerto Rico. He loves Puerto Rico. When Hurricane Maria hit and devastated it, he was devastated because it was like taking his home and taking it out from underneath his feet. He loved every single um, thing about it. They talk about how he... um, is family first. I'm getting intrigued. I know. He's talking about how he, he's family first. So at the end of the day, Luis Miranda is family first. And when you see him on screen, you know, when you see Lin-Manuel Miranda, you see him with all this energy. Mm-hmm. Like, he must get tired sometime. Right. Um, yeah, between him and his dad, he's the tame one. Whoa. He, right. How old is his dad? His dad, I think his dad is in his 80s. I think well, he I might gonna, be 84. That makes sense. But he Amazing. is phenomenal. I want him to be my dad. No shade to my daddy, but I was like, wow. wow. Um, it was wonderful. They were there. They spoke afterwards, oh, and it was really great. That's what I love about Sundance. The things that you find out from the films, and then the people that you meet that are connected to the films, it's just amazing. It's wonderful. It's and, I, amazing. And, and one of the things I love about documentary film is that it's a learning experience. Yes. I always learn something that I didn't know before about life, about the people that are navigating in the life around you. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes I don't always want to see a narrative film sometimes I want to learn about somebody else and what their life in on this planet is like yes. so siempre Luis all um, right girl I'm not you... sure if they have distribution but again I will let you know another documentary that I saw is called be water it is produced and directed by what Bao Nguyen N G U Y E N when when and it is dealing with the life and legacy of Bruce Lee and how he transcended racism and really kind of introduced the the premise of transcontinental box office here in America Mm. because up until he did that with his films they weren't doing that with any films featuring someone of color Wow! so that's a great film loved that Um, opening night as well I saw a film called Crip Camp Crip, oh, I've, I've heard about that one. Camp. Yes, yes. It is directed by Nicole Newman. I can't Newman. talk about it, but I know what it's, what it's about. <laughs> yeah. Nicole Newman uh-huh. and Jim Lebrecht. Jim Lebrecht is a um, sound designer at the Berkeley Rep. And he, when he was a little kid, he went to a camp that was specifically for crippled, disabled, mm-hmm. special needs kids in, um, in New York. And he... When I tell you, again, it was another emotional ride. Mm. I... Up and... I always look at people different that pe- other people deem as different in a different light because I'm different. I'm a woman and I'm black. Mm-hmm. So I'm already different from the mm-hmm. time I hit the earth, right? So right. whenever I see someone who is disabled or deaf or blind or whatever the case may be, 
I don't have sympathy for them. Mm -hmm. I don't have empathy for them. I'm actually (laughs) applauding the fact that they are navigating through this life like anybody else. And that is mostly due to the... um, the, the trajectory that their parents have set up for them. Yes. But Jim Nguyen, he has spina bifida, mm. and he kind of drags himself up by his bootstraps, but he mm. doesn't know any other way. He swims, he's married, he has children, oh, wow. and he just does what he does because he's a human being at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. But this was a very inspirational film. I enjoyed every single moment of it, and it's called Crip, Crip Camp. Crip? Crip. Crip. Camp. C-R-I-P Camp. Right. Um, there's a short that I watched by Olivia Wilde called Wake Up, and it stars Margaret Qualley, who was in um, Booksmart with her, mm-hmm. and she was also in a film called Seaberg. She had a really nice role in Seaberg. Okay. But um, Wake Up is a short that Olivia Wilde teamed up with HP to make that deals with um, this woman who wakes up in a hospital mm-hmm. only to discover that the world has become so distracted by smartphones and laptops and computers. Oh. And they're, thus the title Wake Up. It's 10 minutes long, but it's 10 minutes of your life that you need to set aside to that watch. That sounds like something I need to, it was we really, need to see. It was really good. <laughs> so in addition to those films, I saw, not saw, but I um, I like to attend panels when I can. Oh, yeah. So one of the panels I attended was called a Voices and Vision panel that was sponsored by Warner Media. Mm-hmm. Um, Gina Yashare and Karen Kendrick from Just Mercy were in that. Mm-hmm. And um, they talked about, you know, how you get stuff made and, and how, you know, we need more grips. We mm-hmm. need we need more people behind the scenes. We need more camera you mean people. Of color. Of color. Yes, we need okay. more grips, more women. Yes. Uh, more women of color that are grips. That is Sound true. designers, yes. camera people, writers, producers. All the Every, departments. Yes. Not everybody <laughs> needs to be on camera. That's not right. everybody needs to be in front of a camera acting. That is not what the industry is. Yes. The, the truth and the reality of the situation is if we did not have the grips and the camera and the sound and, and the editors, mm-hmm. you wouldn't even see us. So there's <laughs> so that. True. So, so true. So there's that. Um, yeah. But it was a wonderful, wonderful um, panel. I went to a panel oh. at the Macro House where mm-hmm. Kerry Washington talked about her. New I heard film. about that one. Yeah, that yeah, was yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Um, dealing with the ACLU, that was a great, that was a great yeah. panel. And then I participated in a panel for Nalip. Ah, I wish I had known. Yeah, it I was yesterday. Been there. It was Nalip, and it was a panel wow. on inclusion and diversity. And on that panel with me was Nicole Denson Randolph, who works for D- AMC. Okay. She's the vice president of content strategy and inclusion programming, uh-huh. Mandalit DeBarco. Who, Wait, was that at the Black House? No, this was at Skull Candy. Oh, okay, okay. Mandalit, Sorry. That's okay. Mandalit DeBar- things. That's all right. <laughs> Mandalit DeBarco from NPR, Emma Ramos, who's a Mexican actress and one of the stars of New Amsterdam. Okay. Um, the four of us were on this panel nice. and, and we talked about it. So nice. that's all that I've seen thus far. I have another screening to go to in a little bit, so I'll tell y'all all about that in a minute. But... Um, I want to tell you some highlights. So one of the highlights, as I said, was Zola going viral. The other highlight was Miss Americana, the Taylor Swift documentary. Yes, Taylor she Swift was, was here. here. I didn't get a chance to see that, but she bounced out the next day because yeah. this might be airing while the Grammys are going on. So mm-hmm. you'll catch it after the Grammys, I'm sure. Um, Sorry. That's We're all distracted right. by That's all right. business. We're in a hotel. What are we going to do? <laughs> Um, and then um, we're at the headquarters. We're at the oh yeah, we're at the Sundance headquarters, which used to be the Marriott, but now it's called the Sheraton. Sheraton. So um, yeah, I'm in, we're in the lobby doing this, and so next week I'm gonna finish up my reviews from Sundance. I'm okay. going to see the assistant. I'm seeing Lost Girls, and I have a review and an interview with that director and writer Liz Garbus, who that was nice. one of my bucket list things was to interview her because I love wow. her work. If you are not familiar with her name, she says um, she says she directed and wrote a film, a documentary called What Happened, Miss Simone, okay. and it was very popular a few years ago. And it was a bucket list thing for me because I saw that film the first year I came to Sundance, okay. and this is my seventh he- year here. I know. And then she I got just to, told me that, and I got to interview okay. her. That's the, amazing. So it was like a full circle moment for me. But I want to thank my girl, so, Carly. I want to thank you for inviting me to be a part of this. I mean, I knew you were doing this. I knew. I know you're the curvy critic. I did, you know, I'm, I'm amazed at this setup that I'm looking at now. I mean, I like sister girl. Oh, thank you, sister girl. This has thank been you. a delight. Where can we find you on social media? CarlySpurk.com. Twitter. Carly Spurk everywhere. C A R L E A S E. Last name Burke. B U R K E. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. I'm really loving IG. <laughs> I'm loving, loving, loving Instagram. I do my little story so you can see what I've been doing since I've been here. This is my first Sundance. And um, Facebook, I check in there. And, and I'm a little bit on Twitter. 
cool. Yeah. And you guys know you can find me at The Curvy Critic across all social media platforms. You can also find me right after this normally doing the General Hospital after show at After Buzz TV. You can also find me on Thursday nights on NBC Superstore playing Janet. Yeah. Um, this is it for Sundance two, tw- since Sundance 2020. 2020. And um, I will see y'all next week with some reviews on The Assistant, Lost Girls, and some other things that I might find along the way. So, I can't like wait. I, <laughs> so like I said at the beginning, click the subscribe button below. Give me a big old thumbs up to let me know you were here. Let me know what you think about it. Um, and I can I will continue to inform you about where to find the films once they get distribution. Okay? Yes. So, love I'm, piece of hair grease, y'all. I'm following her. <laughs> Bye.